Night. Pat Spike Jones will be in here tomorrow night from uh, cool. Being John Malkovich, which is just uh, getting raves. Just uh, raves. I Good saw. ones, too. Not saw. the raves like we get. Yeah, not, yeah like no, a man like, show. Yeah. Hey, that sucks! <laughs> what the hell is this? Crap! No, it's good. Good, positive yeah. raves. I saw, uh, e uh, let's see, Siskel. Uh, wait no, a minute, no, no, Ebert. No, no. Ebert. You saw the one that was still Ebert a, and uh, the 700-pound uh, uh, bearded uh, redhead guy who he... Uh, you know, he has this rotating sort of uh, host oh, thing. Oh, still he does. rotating, huh? Well, this guy I've seen on before, but uh, he's back now. Anyway, he he kind of looks like uh, in The Simpsons, the guy who runs the comic book store, the <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, right, Dungeons yeah. and Dragons guy. How but happy it? must Eber be to have a guy on there fatter than him? I I, I swear I, now to God, he's not the fat guy from that show. He uh, he looked like a dwarf next to uh, this <laughs> this load. But the point is, is that they both just completely raved about being John. Malkovich, mm -hmm. the same as uh, just the most innovative comedy they'd seen in years. So See, I, pre uh, I predict that the Man Show will actually have Roger Ebert as a guest at some point. It's uh, it's possible. Yeah. Well, Jimmy, what do you think? I, he has no, probably not. <laughs> no, I think once you once you go mainstream, uh, you apparently are. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's us. Speaking of mainstream, Pat O'Brien, Access Hollywood, NBC, seven thirty or thereabouts. It right. uh, varies from uh, zone to zone. And uh, SportsPage.com, which will be uh, launch uh, November fifth. Fifteenth. Fifteenth. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jenny. <laughs> I'd like to come into this room. Uh, it, it's tough. Oh, I'm used Jenny. to uh, stoned uh, rock bands who won't. Y you can, uh, you know, call them by a different name, and uh, they just sit there. Jenny. Hi. <clears throat> You're 27. What's up? Hey. Well, I I kind of need you guys' opinion. I um I just found out recently that um that I have endometriosis, and so I've been going through a lot of pain. Um, I've been dating the same guy for the last six months or so. He's older than me, and um, so uh, we, we've ha been having a really good sex life. We, we, we only see each other on the weekends, and we have a great sex life. But um, recently, because I've been in so much pain, um, he's really kind of backed off sexually. And, um, How old is he? He's 46. Well, what is this endometriosis? It's actually what we call inspissated endometrium. Oh, okay. Right. It's uh, the lining of the uterus, the stuff that comes out during the period, yeah. goes back up into the abdomen Ooh. and forms little areas of tissue that, that actually sort of menstruate and they irritate the hell out of the lining of the, of the pelvis. Yeah it's, yeah, it's not like the funnest thing I've ever done. But so, but it's all taken care of, right? Well, no, it, it's, well, it, I just had surgery on it um, yesterday, so I'm, I'm feeling better in comparison to how I had been feeling, but, but through uh, this But it's all taken it, care it's of, a right? Chronic, it's a chronic thing. It's better. You keep, no. keep working keep, on yeah, it. Yeah, keep working on it. And it, it, at her age, it begins to be a fertility issue, too. Well, yeah. you've got to use tampoons, too. You've got to have those, you know, I mean, if you don't have that. What are you talking about? What? That's Jimmy's voice, but <laughs> the hell was that? I know a lot about can women's you, can health. Can you meditate I this? I don't yeah, even, even know why the I mean, period happens the, until you just explained it. It's <laughs> God <laughs> punishing the gals. Jenny, <laughs> punishing us. Jimmy, man. Jenny. Yeah. yeah. All right, so your question is. So my question is, is anyway, he, he's been backing off the whole sex thing, and um, over the weekend I just really, I knew that I was going to be having the surgery and that I'd be on pelvic rest. So I really wanted to, I need this physical intimacy with him. I, I just have this need for it. And he, he was like, no, I don't want to. And it, it kind of became a thing. And he finally just said, you know, I'm kind of worried. that Sometimes I wonder if you're like a sexual addict or something. Mm. And, and um, I've just really been thinking about it lately. And I, I guess I'm wondering, like, what is a sexual addict? And Well, a sex addict is, is, is uh, uh, somebody who's an addict in general. Of amongst their behaviors is a compulsive preoccupation with sexuality, and it usually replaces the pharmacologic addiction, and it's progressive. Things get worse, the consequences mount with time. Sexual compulsivity, which is a little more common, are people that describe something similar to what you're talking about, where they have to engage in sexual acts, but usually they're acts that they want to stop. They're things that have, again, sort of consequence. They spend a lot of money. They uh, screw up relationships. Well, they, she they, has pain. Uh, but yeah, I understand yeah. it. It's, it's it's bordering on it. But there are there, uh, and usually those people have been sexually abused in childhood. All right. Well, let, let's start the line of questionings. Uh, how many guys you've been with? 
<laughs> you, I have to answer that. <laughs> All right, well, just a round to the closest uh, 50, let's say. Uh, oh, oh, gosh, no, not even. Um, maybe, like, 20 since I was 16. Maybe. Yeah. How old are you? 27. 27. All right, that's not uh, too compulsive. And, What's the uh, point there, Adam? Uh, my, if, you, if it was 100 or 200. Yeah, I just want to know what her past is like. And uh, never raped or abused or molested or any, any of that good stuff? Um, yeah, my first sexual experience, I was 16, I was raped. Who was the guy? Um, a, a neighbor of my parents. And nothing ever happened before that? To sort of make you a, a victim or uh, some victimizer sort of oh, seek no, you no, out? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, we, um, I had a big crush on him, and, and I had... Um, asked him if you know if he would um if i could lose my virginity to him and he said no he was going to go away into the army and then one night um he changed his mind unbeknownst to me and just kind of forced me into it so all right but yeah. could have been worse you had a big crush on the guy you'd ask him to take your virginity and then uh, he did. I mean, your timetable oh. may not have been the same, but... Sure, absolutely. It could have been much right. more horrible. But, there, but there, just know that there are a lot more subtle intermediate issues that can add to people's drive towards sexuality. And, and you have a very intense drive, and, it, and it's about the need to feel connected and fused and intimate in certain ways. And it may not be the healthiest drive, but it, it's not really in the realm of compulsivity, I would say. John. Hi. You're 14. What's up? Yes. Um, I went out with this girl, and... It was the first time I ever French kissed with a girl, and she, and like, after we did it, um, I, like, she went off and she told all her friends that I bit her lip and everything, and now I'm going out with a different girl, and, um, I, like, she, I'm afraid to, I haven't, I haven't French kissed with her yet, and like, and, you know, we're going to and everything, but I'm afraid that, you know, she's going to go on and tell everybody that I bit her lip or anything like that. Did you bite uh, this first girl's lip? Well, well, this is what she said, because my friend walked in on her, like, talking to her friends. Oh, yeah, uh, John doesn't know how to scam. Yeah, he bit my <laughs> lip, and I was like... Well, let me yeah, hear... John, you, what, are you in ninth yeah. grade? What? You in ninth grade? Yeah. She, she, like, I tell this girl, my new girl... You like a guy with a mustache? What? <laughs> <laughs> Did, well, but, John, wait a minute. Did you bite her lip? Well, he doesn't I know. I didn't feel it, you know, <laughs> but I don't know, you know, like, my best friend walked on him talking about it, saying that, like, yeah, he doesn't know how to scam. Hey, let me give you some advice that my, uh, my buddy Cleto, who's, who's really an expert in this category, gave me when I was, I was about that age. That's right. Here's what you do. Here's how you French kiss at the beginning. And probably this, this holds true um, as long as, as you go. But um, what you do is you keep your tongue back. Let her reach in. Don't go sticking it out. <laughs> Let her go as far as she wants, and you just meet it wherever it happens to be. That way they don't think that, uh, you know, you were sticking your tongue too far down her throat. And, you know, you, you just kind of do what, what they do. I think the biggest problem a lot of guys have uh, with, in any any form of uh, sex, whether it be uh, you know French kissing or oral sex or, or intercourse, they they overcompensate for their lack of experience and they work too hard. Yeah, they try to be too active. I don't think this is about the kiss anyway. Yeah, just lay lay back, John. Yeah. Don't worry. And she's she's not going to say you did anything you didn't do. So I shouldn't tell her anything about like you know. But I, I've only done it once. No, just tell her you're lucky no. I didn't bite you on the ass and move on. That's right. Act like you've been there before. All right. Thanks. Right. Listen, if she sticks it out three quarters of the way, you only stick it out one quarter and of the way. Sticks and stones may break my bones. Isn't that interesting? Age of 14. I mean, wow. he's in some ways he sounded seven. Right. And we've talked to 14-year-olds who sound like 38. Yeah. You know, after finishing a tour in Vietnam, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Uh, and that, that there's that's one of the difficult things about that age is there's so many different sort of biological. It's really uh, weird because I remember ninth grade, tenth grade. There were guys walking around with beards. Yeah. Who were in the ninth grade, <laughs> right. and then there were like these little spindly guys yes. whose uh, sack had not dropped yet, <laughs> and uh, they me. had the big uh, Adam's apple yeah. protruding, that and their me. voice but was cracking, and if, they were hairless. Yeah. If you go into the sexual arena at that age, you don't want everybody talking. About about you. I mean, that's the bottom line. Yeah, you know? right. And in a negative way. Cause they are experimenting now, and you know. Oh well, yeah, because it makes them look like they know what I they're feel doing. bad for him. Leave him alone, you kids. Uh, and yeah, well, meanwhile, though, this kid's 14. He's making out with a different girl every week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a lot better than I was doing at that age. Jordan, uh, better than you're doing at 18, 19, right? <laughs> yeah. No Jordan. Kidding. Yeah. You're yeah. 28. What's up? Um, I recently broke up with a woman um, who had a, a very sort of peculiar odor. And, uh, you know, I've slept with uh, 
you know, some people, a lot of different people, and I per enjoy performing, you know, oral sex. And this particular woman was by far like the stinkiest. I mean, it was just not good. Okay. And it was, um, I'd, I'd say it's one of the reasons we eventually broke up. Did you talk to her about it? Well, that was sort of the weird thing. I was just sort of confused about actually how to go about sort of telling her. Pat, what would you do in this situation? Does she watch the man show? <laughs> uh, I don't think she watched Actually, she should watch Loveline because we talk about it all the time about how the, this is a sign of an infection and how you need to get her to a doctor. Oh, yeah, but, really? But you yeah. broke up with her. Uh, well, you know, it was one of the reasons, but... All right, but why do you have to go back and revisit this with someone you've broken up with? Well, it's not so much revisiting this with somebody I broke up with. It's more like just trying to figure out, like, if it happens again, you know, what's the best way to go about it? say you heard, overheard something on Loveline where we were yeah. talking about this uh, person with a smell, and Drew said that it's always infection. <laughs> and we're virtual, very, very frequently infection. So. All right. And you do what I do. You put that little shot of vapor rub on your upper lip before you go in. <laughs> and, you by guys, the way. You guys wait. see Silence of the Lambs when they uh, fish that body out of the out of the mire, <laughs> and they had to give it an autopsy there where they're pulling, like, the, uh, they had, like, a uh, little, uh, what was that? caterpillar inside the thing with the moth yeah. and everything. <laughs> the, all the first thing they did is they smear a little of that vapor rub up yeah. there. Everything smells like menthol item. Yeah. You go down <laughs> on a, uh, a, a menstruating bear and uh, you wouldn't smell anything. Well, let, let me, what was I going to tell him? Oh, that, that since he may have, if, if he had intercourse with her, he may harbor that bacteria. It doesn't, ah. cause, it doesn't cause infection to man, but it causes a, a, a carrier state, and he could cause motor in his next partner. So his vagina might smell too now. No, his next partner's vagina could no, smell. No, and don't So he needs to be treated him. also. Oh, don't no, freak him out. Stick to French kissing like the 14-year-olds. <laughs> That's right. Michael or uh, Michelle? Uh, yes. You're 24. What's up? Yes. Um, this is basically a question for Dr. Drew. Um, I was wondering, it seems, I don't know if I'm allergic to rubbers. I'm not really sure what it is. Um, when my partner and I, um, we were using rubbers all the time. Um, but I've noticed that, like, I get this, like, itching, burning, it, and it doesn't even, the intercourse doesn't even feel good anymore. Why don't you try other kinds of condoms? Use polyurethane. Have, you know, we went through, like, I mean, we went through, like, different kinds, and it's like... Were they all latex? Um, some we tried the lambskin. We tried like, like every one that we've like seen at the store, and it seems like that it it bothers me, and it feels like I'm going to um, afterwards. It seems like maybe like a week afterwards, I feel like I'm going to get like a yeast infection or something, but it never comes. Uh, to okay, that. but you you're probably not allergic to the material that the condom is made out of. I maybe. don't know. What, I don't well, know that's what a common it is. thing. Yeah, but if you go through but, three different kinds, right, kinds, right, 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 then it, it's it, not it, the material. It, it, it sounds like a lubrication problem, much as anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, let me tell you the problem with the condom is it can be like a uh, sneaker on a basketball floor. You know what I mean? You can get that the cheap, cheap, cheap thing yeah. going on. Absolutely. By the way, the Lakers won. <laughs> is there, uh, was there lubrication? Are, are you lubricated, Michelle? Yeah, well, we will use lubrication and everything, and it's, it's just, I don't know what it is. How long do you guys, are you together? Um, we've been together like three No, no, years. I mean like when you engage in sex, how long is this? Um, maybe like five minutes. Mm-hmm. Five minutes. Well, that's the thing. It's a marathon, yeah. What's this guy minutes. trying to prove? What's he going? <laughs> is he going off to the army? What's with this five minutes? You know, I only see him. I mean, I only see him like usually like once a week. All right, right. I guess so. He's got to get his licks in, but still, five minutes. Yeah, yeah that that's not a real long time for uh, a lot of lubrication and all that stuff. And this never happened to anyone before him. No, this mm. never happened before. Mm. And what if you don't use a condom? It seems like if we don't use a condom, it's not. Um, it's not, I mean, it doesn't bother me really at all. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably the condoms that are bothering you. Yeah, but she's going with three different varieties. She's going with yeah. the latex, I mean, she's I've going with the... Ones. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I've tri we've tried, like, different ones, and it seems like... You need to tr maybe a different form of contraception. I know, I, I mean, I plan on going in... I mean, I still want to use something else, but I'm not really sure what else to... Well, use the pill, how about well, that? Well, yeah, we're doing that, but I still kind of want to have protection, though. I mean... Wait, wait, the pill is virtually 100% effective. Yeah, but... You want to have protection from what, AIDS? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I want protection from that. I want protection from, you know, VD. It doesn't, I mean, anything like that. I just don't know what this could be. I mean... Don't you... Well, do you trust this guy? Yeah, I totally trust him. All right, him. so use the pill with him, and then when you move on, you go back to the condom. Okay. If it doesn't bother you with other people. I mean, could I have, like, some kind of infection, do you think? Yeah, it's possible. It couldn't hurt to take a hose and hose that whole area out. Well, it you couldn't know? hurt to get yeah. it checked. But it doesn't sound specific. <clears throat> the driveway. Like yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's important. And, uh, but don't uh, blow the leaves in the neighbor's pool. <laughs> they get pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what to make of that area. It, I, I, it's just... Uh, what is going on in there? It, I, it is not nearly sturdy enough for me. <laughs> we did some TV to Adam advocated putting it up on like a plywood platform. No, I did not. What? I was talking about <laughs> oral sex, and here's what I said. You know, guys, a lot of guys claim they love to perform oral sex yes. on a woman. Well, Brian's always saying that. <laughs> yeah. Right? He's got to get quantum physics involved in this. And, uh, they they claim they love to do it. Quantum I, condom. <laughs> I claim no guy really loves to do it, but he loves to make his partner feel happy. Right. And he loves to give his partner an right. orgasm, and I, people were arguing with me, and I said, listen, if you just removed a vagina, mounted it on a uh, screen, scrap of plywood, no guy would be sitting in front of the TV licking it. Please. Yeah, what a, what a God thought. knows I've tried. Right. It's my, about the my result. My dad had one for years in the basement. I never went near it. Is that a, is that a sweep show you're doing there? Is it? It's a new game well, show. Well, the good news now, is there's you, a variety of condoms. Uh, there's even, you, you, know. you put a hole in the uh, plywood and you're in business, but right. not just the oral stuff. Right, Drew? All right. We'll uh, take a little break. Jimmy Kimmel and uh, Pat O'Brien are both here, and we'll be back after this. Love Line, Pat O'Brien and Dr. Drew. The phone number is 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Yep, here we go. No more outside conversation. It is Love Line. I'm Adam Parole. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Spike Jones will be in here uh, tomorrow night, as uh, well as uh, some of the cast of uh, being John Malkovich. i got I to finish something I'm saying to Pat. Though. Pat, I've never seen anybody, any man, approach uh, an awful situation yeah. with such dignity. And, as and Pat courage. has no, here tonight? No, yeah, well, oh. yeah. <laughs> we have a common friend who died of Lou Gehrig's disease, yeah. and we watched him go. Awful. It was terrible. How old was he? 38? Uh, 40, 40, 42, 42, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Three pretty boys. tight with him, huh, Drew? <laughs> about, about four years off his age. <laughs> yeah, Pat knew his age. Yeah, I guess there Sounds was. Sounds like Pat had a friend and somebody else is jumping on the pity train. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's not go to hell. <laughs> hey, Drew brought it up, right? It is, uh, it is a love We're line. We're trying to remember our friend. <clears throat> All right. Well, what yeah, a, yeah Drew's know. really trying to remember. <laughs> Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. That is uh, Pat O'Brien over there. And, of course, uh, the great Jimmy Kimmel from uh, Win Ben Stein's Money and The Man Show. 10.30 Wednesday night, <laughs> Comedy Central. Ben Stein. I hate Ben Stein. You, wor you work with Ben Stein. <laughs> Pat's jealous of what you and Ben have, I think. No, Let me I tell you why Pat hates Ben Stein. Not, uh, why? Why? I don't hate him. It's just that I've met Ben Stein. <laughs> that, that was enough. Maybe 30 times. And right. every time he says to me, now who are you? What do you do? Oh, are you in the, the business? I said, yeah, Ben, we met. And he'll go, are you a... Are you in management? <laughs> I go, no. Did he have his dog uh, under his arm? You gotta understand, Ben doesn't watch a lot of the, no, uh, it doesn't matter. the light energy. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> he's, he's, That's some of a big right. partner in yours. Yeah. All right, let me ask you this. He's a man in America, right? <laughs> yep. 17 well, U.S. Opens, four World Series, he, 10 he, NBA he does, Finals, he couldn't 10 NBA, possibly NCAA, know less two about Olympics. Sports. He doesn't know his sports. Okay. He doesn't know anything about sports. But right. he know. I'll tell you one thing. He knows. He loves me, right, Jimmy? <laughs> he does love him. How many times have you met him? It hates Drew twice. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you do? The dynamic here. He loves Adam. Well, he loves me, of course. Right. He hates Drew. <laughs> Drew doesn't mind him. Pat hates Ben. Ben probably doesn't hate Pat. Ben, right. although he has, he has no, no idea who you yeah, are. Right. Yeah. Which so, is fine. But. We're all going camping. <laughs> this and by the way, the reason Ben ha hates me is I, I remind him that uh, corporal physical abuse of your child is not a good. Thing. Well, he and hates he, he wants you me, mainly. He wants me to quote literature whenever I say that. The real him. reason he hates you is because you get to be a doctor and he doesn't. That's that's, what, that's his first love. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Ross? Dreams. You're 15. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. What's up there, Stoner? <laughs> hey, baby. Hey, come. <laughs> this is God. more like it. I'm sorry? This is more like it. We got these women with chlamydia and... <laughs> What's up, Ross? Well, I must tell you guys, I've been a fan for a long, long time. I've been listening to you guys since, like, sixth grade. If you had to choose between Loveline and Pot, which would you go with? Uh, Loveline. Oh, wow. wow. That's nice. Yeah. Well, All right. Don't let your dealer hear you talking that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, what's the question, Ross? Well, uh, all right. I just hope my girlfriend's not listening. <laughs> Uh, it's almost a year ago today I cheated on my girlfriend, mm -hmm. and, uh, 
I just don't know how to tell her. <laughs> I, I've been. I may just have. I, I, uh, I went down on this girl, uh, Jenny. Like. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, Lisa yeah. just said uh, he lied uh, about yeah. the question. Yeah. Hey, I'm Ross, come on, come on, Ross. Come on, we, get, we we only take serious questions on this show. Is qualified. Now listen, if uh, it's been a year and she hasn't found out, why tell her? Because because I I feel bad. Oh yeah, right. No, you Ross don't. Is any remorse or please character? No, what? dude. Seriously, listen to me. <laughs> okay. It's been it's been a year, right? Okay. Why did you mention the girl's name? That's what's troubling me. Why did I mention the girl's if you, name? If, if you're so worried about your girlfriend finding out about it, it's so disturbing to you, why would you immediately no, tell us a name? About she's finding out about it. No, no, she's, why would you tell us a name right up front? Listening. I just People I, are concerned about stuff like that uh, hide information. They don't uh, screw Ross. All right. Lisa's pissed because a uh, phone screen at Lisa because he said he had a different problem. So fine. <laughs> Justin. Yo. You're 22. Yeah, I got a question. Uh, my sister just had uh, unprotected sex for the first time. And oh, congratulations. Oh my my yeah. sister had it uh, tonight for the uh, 44,000th <laughs> time, <laughs> by the way, with, uh, I think, an yeah. 1800th man. But uh, she called just to let me know about that. All right. Uh, so anyways, um, she... But my sister's married to a guy that has a tattoo on his arm that says Helen, and my sister's name is Kathy. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> <cool>. Nice. <laughs> so what's the story? How do you know about this? Uh, well, because she, she told me, but here's the oh problem. Oh, my God. Uh, she was on the, her, the uh, pill for five years before that, and she just got on it, and this was her first period that she's had while she's been off the pill, and she had sex while she was on her period, and now she's freaking out, mm -hmm. and she had, it was on Sunday. What pill was she on? Um, uh, you know what, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Justin. Yo. How much, uh... How much talking about it? Listen, let me tell you. I talk to my sister. She tells me, you know, she, I have uh, two nephews. She tries to start getting into the birthing part. I'm like, uh, let, uh, unless it's C-section, I don't want to know. I don't want to. I don't want to picture your vagina and anything coming in or out of it. I have never had one, uh, ten seconds of discussion with my sister about sex. Never. And meanwhile, Nor Justin is ever. like, you know, hey, Justin, his sister, sitting down. She's explaining about a great milky discharge. She oh, says coming let me out. Let tell of you, her, my, you well, go maybe under the maybe they have a close relationship, and she's worried, and she's. Uh, how, how old is she? Uh, she's 17. Hey, you was low, low, low estrogen. What? She's on birth control she's, for five years. She's, she's 17. Yeah, she just came running in with the low estrogen. And yeah, it was to keep her, to keep everything going. Oh. All right. And how many days off the pill was she? Um, less than 30. Oh, she'd been off almost 30 days? Yeah. Oh, and, and then she had sex? Yeah. She needs to take the morning after pill. Okay, I told her about that. It was on Sunday night. Is it still Okay. Where are we here? Tuesday? Wednesday? Where yeah, are we? yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, you got to do it, like, right away. And it, get, it gets less effective as you move out from the event. You have 72 yeah. hours. It's like 90% effective at 24 hours, about 80% effective at uh, 48, and about 70. Okay, I'm in California, so can I just go to any Planned Parenthood? Planned Parenthood will be able to get it for you, yeah. All right. Right on. Thank you, You're a good brother. We don't trust you. And let me explain yeah, to great. a lot of the Stone listeners about the 72 hours. Uh, there can't be, you can't break it up. Can't yeah. be 36 hours, then three months, then, the, then you <laughs> use up the other 36. They have to go consecutively, <laughs> right, Drew? Yeah. You don't always clarify yeah. that. Let's, uh, let's teach Pat about this. You know, you know about this, this method of contraception? The morning after drug? Yeah. The, well, I know about the one in Europe. Is it the same thing? No. no it's 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 a, we need Pat to be a part of this army of people that needs to get the word out about this. Pat's been looking for a cause. This is a good one. Uh, it basically would eliminate abortion. Mm -hmm. it, 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 if somebody has an unprotected sexual encounter, it's basically overall or low overall, the regular contraceptive pill, take a double dose within 72 hours of an unprotected encounter, 12 hours later, take another double dose, 75% prevention Chocolate of pregnancy. Chocolate shake for lunch. It prevents ovulation. Why just, wouldn't people just do this as a form of birth control? Because it's, because it's only about 75% effective. Okay. It's not meant to be that. But but it is significantly better over just praying, obviously. And it's, a, it's not an abortion It's pill. not an it's not abortion pill. It, it, it works exactly the same way as the contraceptive pill, yet because it's taken after intercourse, people are frightened of it right. as, though, as though it might cause an abortion. You but know, the, the science has proven I it I think doesn't. it's because of that RU486 pill that people heard about so much, and but then you different. hear about... But I think, though, just you hear about a pill that you take right, right after. That's, and that it's 
it mind. seems uh, it seems like it might be the same. People don't have a lot of politician room. in America would t would take that on. But as wouldn't an alternative? It, but though, wouldn't you think it's an important? It's a way of eliminating abortion. Sure. It's an important thing for us to begin educating people about it. Mm -hmm. True. All right, we We're going to have to uh, right. finish with your uh, personal crusade right. uh, after this right. break. Okay. Right. Yes. So Pat O'Brien, Jimmy Kimmel. We'll be back. Uh, oh yeah. Everybody now. AFMA.com Worldwide. Uh -huh. Uh, thanks for turning my mic on, Anderson. It's real big of you. We're going to take a quick 10-second timeout. We'll be back with more of the show in just 10 seconds. This is Loveline on Radio Station. The new rock. Train. 92.1 KFMA. Green Valley, Tucson. It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Spike Jones is going to be in, in here uh, tomorrow. You know him from uh, directing a lot of cool videos. He also did uh, Being John Malkovich, which he'll be talking about tomorrow night. It's supposed to be a real good movie. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Pat O'Brien is our guest tonight from Access Hollywood. Also, if you uh, have a computer, sports page.com, which uh, will be launched November 15th is uh, Pat's website. And of course, a great Jimmy Kimmel from uh, Win Ben Stein's Money. And Let's do a little plug of the man show. The man show, there. yes. Well, how about Drew.com, as long as you're plugging everything? I'll, I'm going to plug DrewDrew.com in about Jimmy What can I learn show? on Drew.com? DrDrew.com. Well, Jimmy did a webcast with me on it, actually. Yeah. What did you learn? Uh, I didn't learn anything during the webcast, but I went on the website and I learned some things about, well, the vagina. <laughs> Uh -huh. Basically, health issues for young people. And we yeah. do a lot of other interviews and, and uh, movie reviews. A lot, a lot of lively stuff. Remember when yeah. health issues were pimples? Yeah. We have that, too. Yeah. yeah. We have that, too. Yeah. But, uh, boy, young people have it's a lot of mental health yeah. stuff. Yeah. We, we're, we're actually in business with the National Institute of Health. And so we really have that Fort Knox of, of web information. They're right. actually making people crazy and stuff like that so that they have a service. It's a big it's a conspiracy, a big circle yeah, well, perpetrated good. by the And then we do webcasts. We built a, build a studio and we do webcasts. Talk, talk. Interact on webcast every week. But more importantly, I would say than that, Drew, is the fact that the Man Show new season <laughs> debuts Wednesday night. That's uh, either either it's over and you just missed it, if this is the replay tomorrow on the East Coast, or it's on tomorrow night at 10.30. On Comedy Central. I'll right, really savvy of you to know the, all that. Oh, on repeat, yes. right? You can just watch it. This one's brand new. No, I know. Brand it's the debut. That would be brand new. Right, right, exactly. Exactly. That's why I wanted to come tonight. We double up. You know right. what I'm I like that. Yeah. Greg... Break. Yeah. Yep. You're 27. What's up? Um, I'm just uh, I'm into bondage and domination, and uh, was also I'm, a, I'm clinically depressed, just so you know, and I'm on medication and going through therapy. And uh, I just want to know whether that's all right. So what's the problem? Do you uh, do you want to be uh, bound and dominated, or are you the aggressive partner? Um, I like to tie girls up and uh, just for the sake of, you know, easier to tease them, better for oral sex. Do they know you? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Other than that, it's called abduction <laughs> and rape. As far as the domination goes, it's basically just role-playing. Is that really S&M, when, when somebody just likes somebody to be sort of uh, out of control and... Um, yeah, actually, I, you know, I kind you know of... I mean, the, the, you know, it's, uh, the thing that always cracks me up about those bondage places is they, they like it's some sort of science. They have that safe word. Yeah. When oh, things are getting out of hand, yeah. uh, there's that safe word. Yeah. And uh, you don't really need a safe word. It's just, hey, God damn it, my <laughs> nipples, <laughs> no! <Come on>. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Susie, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding is the safe word. Ouch! <laughs> Let me tell you something. If I, when I get these shackles off, I'm going to do some ass beating myself. All right? What about I'm not kidding? The uh, I'm not kidding thing from grade school. Is, that's is, the universal that, that's uh, all. magic I've, word. I've always said this. As a, as a kid, I don't know when it stops. I think it stops about the time you stop playing tetherball. You used to be, no able, to use, used to be able to use that I'm serious call. Uh, all right, like, yeah. I remember one time some kids, right. I thought it'd be funny if they rolled me up in a Persian rug. I put my hands by my side. The rug was 20 feet long. I got in the middle of it, and they rolled me up. Well, after I was rolled up in this rug, I thought, hey, this ain't a great place to be. I can't breathe. And then when the kids started kicking me and laughing and jumping on me, it was a real good time. But when I yelled, 
I'm serious. <laughs> they go, hey, unrolling, unrolling, unrolling. Yeah, there's that level of panic. Yeah, going, oh, come on, guys. You get, you get people in a lot of like hel half Nelsons, and you do a lot of holding underwater and stuff. And if you give that I'm serious call, they know yeah. that yeah. Uh, game's over. It's like tamping out. And I've always thought, wouldn't that be great if you could bring that into your adult life? Sure, there it is. The boss <laughs> fires you, tells you I'm sorry. You go, listen, I just leased a Mercedes. Are you serious? You're firing? You're fired. I'm sorry, Pat. I need this job. I'm sorry, Fred. I'm serious! <laughs> <laughs> or like your All girlfriend right. dumped you or something. You could just yell. Uh, if you just one or two as an adult, the I'm serious that people would have to heed. But uh, when I, what the hell we're doing? Oh, Greg, Greg with a safe word. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, yeah, right. Uh, Greg, explain the safe word. Do you have that? Um, actually, it's, you know, that, that's uh, really not been an issue. It's more but do you, do you yeah. agree on one before you get bound or bind? Uh, no, I haven't. Not hasn't been that. He's not that far into it. He's just, oh, he's just sort of restraining how many somebody. Greg, how many girls have let you tie them up? Oh, really? About be about honest. A dozen or so. How many? About a dozen or so. And and it has a lot of that dirty talk and stuff too. Uh, it's more basically. It's 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 more. It, you can tease them. You can go ahead and and uh, when you're performing oral sex, they can't actually um, force you. You know force any further contact than you actually want. You know, you know the whole tying up thing is basically when you're tied up means you don't have to do any work. Like, all right, well, I got an excuse. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to lay back and, and enjoy the whole thing. I take it a step further. It's like, uh, get a couple popsicle sticks and some twine and let's tie the penis around. <laughs> Two, I can really relax. I'll nap right through this whole ordeal. <laughs> what do you find? I mean, these people that you know are people that you date? And... <laughs> yeah, really. Where do you find these girls? Oh, just people that I date. See, he's not really into the, it's not kind of it's different, isn't it? Different, isn't it? All right, well, let's, let's focus on your depression more, Greg. That seems like something to take care of, and then we'll see how the uh, bondage goes. Well, right. I am on medication. I am getting therapy, and I just want to know if, you know, that's aberrant behavior that I need to bring up with my therapy. If, if you bring you, it up, but, but it's not, not I mean... In, if in you need it every time to function, right. it is. Right, that's right. Then if it's you, a very important if at you, that point. If you just want to... Well, actually, I, it, I get off more in bringing my pleasure to my partner. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, listen, if you want to dust off the gimp ball every once in a while <laughs> and get it on, that's fine. <laughs> but not not on a not on a daily basis. You shouldn't need it gimp every ball. time. I haven't played that since I was in fourth grade. Remember that, gimp ball? Let me, yeah. It's like tether ball? It's like tether ball for yeah. older kids. <laughs> Let me tell you a, a absolutely true story. I did. I had a girlfriend who wanted me to talk. Uh, Drew, you know, this way, insisted that I talk a little dirty, get a little nasty in bed. You know, she was like, get mean, get nasty, get dirty. I go... Uh, okay, well, hold on. Let me think. Oh, yeah. I hate your mom. <laughs> she's fat. She's uh, she's obtrusive. She has no manners. I don't. I don't. I don't like her at all. <laughs> she was like, "What the hell are you talking about?" I was like, "You wanted me to get nasty, and I really, I don't like your mom. I just don't like the woman." I hate that blue like, pashmina oh. you wore last night. Oh, okay, she, she just stopped everything. <laughs> Wait, we got to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, chiffon makes your ass look wide. <laughs> Michelle? Uh-huh. You're 21. Uh-huh. What is up? Um, am I on the air? Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, I'm thanks. five months pregnant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, about a month ago, uh, I came to the conclusion that my boyfriend, who is also the father of my baby, is gay. <laughs> you came to that conclusion and he came out to you about it? Well... I knew he was bisexual. Mm. We went to a club, which was a gay club. We just went to go dancing. And um, I went to the bathroom. I came back. He was dancing with a guy. But a little while later, he said, let's leave. And I said, why? And he said, well, I don't want to screw up on you. And we had a big fight about it. And the next day, um, I... I, we hadn't. We had already been fighting because we hadn't had sex in like three months. Hey, hey, Michelle. Uh huh. But let me ask you something. I, I know you're in a bad way right now, but he hadn't had sex in many months. Uh, the guy was bisexual. You went out dancing to at a gay club. He's dancing with a guy. Uh, how shocking a revelation! Is this that he I, might in, think mean, about having sex with a guy? It, it seems fairly obvious to me, doesn't he's it? He's bisexual. Well. You worried that the baby's going to be gay? No, I'm just... 
right. Hey, yeah. Well, M Michelle, seriously, you you knew he was gay. You didn't knew he was you? bi. You knew he was bi. Well, yeah, but you know, he he's the one that wanted to be with me. You know, we were best friends for a year. Okay. Well, you know, he, this might work out good actually because I tell you, the gay guys were pretty responsible. That's true. And uh, you're best friends with the guy already. You already got a leg up on most people that have a relationship, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so is there uh, another issue? You're afraid there's no one to take care of the baby. Is it uh, oh, you want no, the no, baby no. to have a game? We still live together, and he takes care of me. He wants to be in the baby's life, but we don't tell anybody. Nobody knows, and I don't. All right. Hey, I don't know how to deal with it, Michelle. But what is what is up with you that you would hook up and strike up this kind of relationship with a guy who was so precariously balanced sexually? I mean, you had to know that this guy wasn't going to be around for the big picture. No, I didn't. You didn't? Why? Why? But she so didn't plan naive? on getting pl pregnant either, right? Hey, Michelle, I'm guessing not. You didn't plan on the pregnancy, did you? No, it happened about a week after we were together. Mm. Can you uh, give the child up for adoption? No, 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 no. Why not? Why? No, no. Why not? Because I want this baby. I mean, I'm. It's. <sighs> I mean, I know he's going to be a good father. I know he's going to take care of me and the baby, but um, I, I don't you. know, like, how it's going to affect the baby. How do you know he's going to be a good father and take good care of you and the baby? I just, I've been friends with him for a long okay. time. Okay, well, then what are you worried about? Well, I mean, what am I supposed to tell my child? I don't know how this is going to affect my baby. I well, you the went away at least a couple of years before you bring it up. What, whatever his sexual orientation is, if he's an available, quality person, it's not going to matter. There's no evidence that sexual orientation affects parenting. Is the guy still going to stay with you for this? Is it, did I... um, we're not together. Like, you know, we're not intimate. We're just... Okay. Right, because he's gay and all. Yeah, Michelle, you really painted yourself into a corner here. And like I said, uh, something something's up that you would strike up a relationship with this guy. Where where do you come from? Is there any abuse or anything in your past? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can hear it in her voice. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Big time. Um, I don't know. I mean. Was your dad abusive? I didn't have my dad around. Have, oh, okay. have you been hospitalized psychiatrically, anything like that? No. Okay. Hey, uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. I, I really would like you to consider just uh, remain open to the adoption oh, option, no, no. please. You're you're in no shape to be a mother. You're really not. I mean, uh, I hate to give you uh, too tough a love here, but you're really not in any condition to raise a child, and he may not be either. It's completely not an option. All right. Well, mm -hmm. if you're hell-bent on screwing your kid up, uh, so be it. But please don't get pregnant again. All right? And I don't know what to tell you about this guy. I know... Hey, okay, Michelle, why don't you promise me this? Just get a little therapy, work on yourself, read a few books, work on yourself, and be as good a mother as you can, What's okay? With, uh, that's decent advice, right? It's not a lost cause, right? Uh, no. 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 And no. we'll see what happens with this guy. But you worry about yourself right now, okay? All right. Okay. Mom is Good luck. more yeah. important and, than dad anyway. And Michelle, the part of the um, couple years. the new season of The Man Show debuts tomorrow night, uh -huh. 1030, 1030, Comedy Central. I don't, know if that, I don't know if that'll help, but I'll tell you this, it's not going to hurt. <sighs> maybe maybe it'll turn him around. You know, Jimmy. You know, put we, him in front of that TV. We do many interviews for The Man Show. I don't even bro. think a child should be exposed to that stuff in utero. <laughs> <laughs> My son was watching it tonight. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure any man should be exposed to this. <laughs> he's, he's six years old, and you know, he's watching this nonsense go on. <laughs> they had a little marathon of the show tonight. I, I saw the uh, I saw the uh, movies men don't want to see tonight with uh, complete with the uh, movie uh, Pioneer Dads with uh, Lavar Burton and Dick Van Patten. <laughs> oh uh, experience the trials and tribulations firsthand of uh, interracial gay adoption in the 1800s. <laughs> Uh, they worked the land and each other. <laughs> LeVar uh, called me the next day at the office. You remember that, Jimmy? Oh, yes. It was great. There's nothing worse than uh, LeVar Burton calling you up at your office, a man you've never spoken to in your life. Pissed. Hey, reading Rainbow, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. he was like, uh, hey, uh, Adam, this is LeVar Burton. I'm, I'm trying to be casual. Hey! <laughs> you know, trying that black thing. My man! 
<laughs> what's uh, what's you sure? You what's sure wasn't? You sure wasn't Jimmy and his uh, friends? Uh, it wasn't me. I was standing right I beside. I thought him. everyone was pulling my chain, but uh, it was Lavar, and it he was, wanted to yeah. know uh, what was up and uh, why uh, why him as uh, <laughs> one of the pioneer dads. And I said, uh, why not? Why Dick Van Patten? You never know, Lavar. And he said. Well, Dick Van Panten is seen as a father figure in this country. I'm not. And I thought, well, you know, LeVar, you got a good point. Even though I wrote that one myself, I'm going to talk to the writers about it. Mainly because they're in the next room. <laughs> he gave himself a good scolding. Yeah. LeVar, you haven't seen the poster? It's really funny. It's dynamite. We'll send one out to you, all right? Oh, my God. They work the land and each other. Oh, boy. I haven't heard from LeVar since No, then. no. Yeah. Chelsea? Yeah. You're I 20. Guess. What's up? Actually, yeah, I've seen Jimmy on Letterman the other night. It was pretty good. Oh, yes. His, uh, his uh, triumphant kind of appearance. But... Yeah. 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 How do, what'd you think of my body? <laughs> pretty hot, actually. Well, thank what'd you very much. Did you come out without a shirt on or something? <laughs> Yeah, I tattoo. I took my shirt off. Listen, I want to talk to your engineer for a second. Listen, you idiot. I made that sound effect, and you're not using it properly. I listen to the show, and the sound effects are way too low. Either yeah. play them or don't play them. Uh -oh. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, Thanks, that wasn't Anderson. a sound effect. <laughs> Jimmy actually made that sound effect. Yeah, uh, in Tampa, Florida, in my early radio days. Uh, morning radio? Yep. Yeah. When he had a problem. It's your voice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> See? Morning radio. That's right. Brilliant. <laughs> Chelsea? Yeah. What's up? Okay, I've been listening to the show for like three years now, and I've heard Dr. Drew tell, tell all the girls, you know, if you're having bad relationships or picking the wrong guys, then... Come you to know, my place. Take a, take a few years off. So that's what I did, you know. Good. Took a few years off, went to college, and uh, got all my crap straight and got it all put together. And well, How'd you do that? How'd you get your crap put together? Oh, just by, like, family support and, you know, working through all my, like, I have abandonment issues. and. How'd you, you work know. through them? Um, basically talking to my mom about it, and hmm. I got put into therapy for a little while. Okay. That helped. Right. Okay. Now uh, the question is, I'm um, dating a pedophile junkie. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly. No, I'm not dating anyone. And what was and the uh, problem? What was the? What was? The, why were the abandonment issues? Your dad leave or something? When you were uh, yeah, a whole big gamble-worthy story. Um, oh. Did he abuse you? No, it was. Um, when I was 13, my mom told me that uh, my dad wasn't really my dad. You know, just sprung mm -hmm. it on me, and mm -hmm. so. And, uh, yeah, but how did, how, does she, how, does she, how does she tell you that? How does she know what dad you're thinking of, by the way? You could have been thinking of your real dad. <laughs> yeah. And note in the lunch. No, seriously, how does she tell you? How did she break this? Yeah. Um, I was uh, on the way to um, see my dad, and she goes, oh, by the way. Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he's your dad. And <laughs> All right. 13? Be up front Monday, Monday at noon. Right. I'll pick you up. <laughs> she couldn't wait until you were 28. You know, Mom, think, exactly. think of the impulse there. Yeah. Yeah, what's up with mom? Yeah. Well, she made a mistake. She did. You know. Right. So that's like, that's like the old uh, joke where the priest is trying to figure out, teach another one how to tell somebody that their spouse is dead. He goes up the door and says, "Are you the widow?" <laughs> you know? She goes, "No." He goes, "Want to bet?" Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think I could tell that. Uh, yeah, I think Played so. I think All right, just so did. Chelsea didn't really have a question other no. than she well, got she, her crap together. She just no, to no, say no, no, Dr. She, Drew saved her life. No, she wants to know how to get back into dating. That she's out of it, she can't get back. She's oh, like cu stuck well, in limbo. Please get drunk and hit the streets. Yeah, oh, let her ask her question. All yeah. right, Chelsea. Yeah. You want to know how to get back into dating? Well, I'm, I'm deathly afraid of, like, because I have these fantasies of healthy sex, and I'm oh, completely oh. afraid of it. Why? I, I don't know. I can't get close to anyone. You know Isn't what I mean? That interesting. Well, that, this, is, this is the real, under, you know, all those people we talk to are fetishes and then all this crap. This is what's under that. A yeah. boring person? A boring, yeah. per a boring, frightened person. That's right. Chelsea? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not something you're going to be able to do overnight. All I right. just think uh, you'll meet a guy, and he'll be better than the guys you met when you were in a different place emotionally. Okay. And things will work their way out. I mean, at 20, everyone screws up a little, and you're still yeah. feeling your way around. That's why you don't get married like Jimmy. But <laughs> it's a learning process. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Put a condom on, and, and you realize your tendencies. And, Keep an eye yeah, on yourself. And try to, try to get the relationship up and running before you have the sex. Brian. <laughs> 
Yeah. You're 24. Yeah, how's it going, everybody? Good. Good. Right on. I got a question. You guys were mentioning an issue like a week ago or maybe a day or two, a day or go or something like that, but you were talking about how guys get stuck in the friend mode with girls or whatever. Right. And, well, my question kind of is... Uh, well, I've always been, I've always believed in kind of getting a plutonic relationship, relationship started oh, with a girl. I like that word, plutonic. <laughs> <laughs> Very a mixed plutonic. message. Adam, uh, usually, is this Don King? <laughs> Adam usually becomes the, uh, you become the car detailer for the girl first. And that I like to come over, mow the lawn, change the oil, yeah. and uh, Simonize the car. <laughs> it's plutonic. plutonic. Well, not, not that bad. <laughs> well, I mean, just as far as like, getting a friendship started, getting some sort of, you know, uh, what's it called? Oh, now I get nervous. I can't think of anything to say. Well, we understand what you're saying. Some sort of common ground, you yes, know? Yes. Right. And yeah. some, trying to get it going before the physical part happens. And no, 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 no. No? No. W women need to know that they're wanted. And if you if you are not available to them right away, they aren't going to let you in. Uh, you're, you're just friend. At that point, my first move is to dry hump. No, no, no. I don't need to extend my But hand. the point is, you can be like be the friend, right. but at the point at which, I mean, no, no. it needs to be sort of a distant friend. Let me. Let me the argue. thing with all that is, why do you have to think it so much? Yeah. Why do you have yeah. to think it out? Why do you yeah. have to say, let's just be friends? Yeah. Well, listen, somebody have here's what it is. is it, you know, it, no, Pat, you don't understand this because you're a good-looking man, but uh, guys like myself, is he uh, is he on the line right now? Yeah, he can hear you. You're probably shooting over your head with uh, with these girls, and, you know, and probably you really need to lower your standards a little bit mm -hmm. because girls are pretty much either in or out right at the beginning. There's no if you, uh, you know, you do this, oh, he's so nice. I mean, maybe every once in a blue moon they'll give in, they'll relent to something like that, but uh, still you're going to be in over your head. I think that you know you're you're probably picking the girls that aren't necessarily on your, your caliber, and um, and that's probably the problem. And you know by being a, a buddy to them, uh, you know it's, it's not the way in the door. Well, I, I, if I heard Brian's question, and uh, Jimmy has some valid <laughs> points there, uh, none of them entertaining, but yeah. all of them valid. If I hear J if Brian's point, he's saying, you know, why can't you be friends for a little right. bit and then have it evolve into right. a relationship? That is fine. You should always get to know somebody, yeah. but right. have it heading down a certain path. Yes. You meet them. You have yeah. a conversation. You don't have to make out with them the first day you meet them, but have it go down the path toward that as opposed to to the other path, which is the platonic, or as Brian yeah. would say, but why define hang it? it? But why define it? It's no, but the girl know what direction yeah. it's heading. Well, then the chemistry here. will let you. Here's yeah. the main thing: guys play the friend card because they're afraid to put themselves on the line and fear rejection. Mm -hmm. Right. And women like to see somebody who's available and taking risk and who shows what how they feel about and them. Women and women are and, and, and they're either going to be in or out. Any yeah. really, ultimately. Yeah. I mean, I if, you, if you sit and listen and yeah. don't talk. You're going to score. Yeah? If you sit and listen, the men who sit and listen, right? And just yeah. listen and listen and listen and listen and listen. Well, it's also t uh, good to... You're going to uh, have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. feign a little of that agreement. To, and I don't so think there's anything wrong with it. I'm not uh -huh. ripping that. Uh -huh. You yeah. just keep nodding your head. Guys and, like Jimmy and I. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Me, I was like, hey, you need a ride uh, yeah, to the mall. That? What do you want to do now? You know, I could probably help you with your homework there. I'm, I'm pretty good with You abducted Jimmy, though, didn't you? Now what do you want to do? Yeah. Oh, my wife. No, that was a, that was just an accident on her part. <laughs> no, what she was thinking. <laughs> All right, she's still trying to get an annulment. It's been 11 years. <laughs> we are going to take a little break. Uh, Pat O'Brien and uh, Jimmy Kimmel are both here, and uh, they'll remain here right through the break, and then we'll come back and talk to all of you. Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Loveline. Just a minute or two. Call one eight hundred Love one nine one. One KFMA. Yep, it is Love Line. I'm Adam Perola. That is uh, Dr. Drew, Pat O'Brien from Access Hollywood, NBC, 730 or thereabouts uh, on weeknights is on and uh, all over the weekend, uh, too. Also, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, Wid Menstein's Money in the Man Show, Wednesday nights, Comedy Central, 1030, big premiere tomorrow night, and it's back to the phones we go. Katie. Hi. You're 15. Yeah. What's up? First, I just want to say I love Love Life, and thanks. I listen to it every night, and Adam, you're like the funniest person ever. Oh, thanks. Okay. So what happened was, I went to this girl's party, and um, 
I got really drunk and I kind of got on her brother. And now she hates me and she thinks I'm a whore. And he's like all weird and he won't talk to me. How old's her brother? He's a senior. And you you sort of pursued him after you got drunk? No, see, it kind of like was kind of mutual. All right. Just kind of like. Did, did you have sex? No. What'd you do? We just kind of like scammed. What, what, what does that mean? I, I've been seeking it an It means a lot more than when uh, you were attempting to scam. Oh, yeah. What does scamming mean? Oral sex? Well, no. No, see, they were all in the room. Yeah, all right. But what does it mean? No one will say what it means. What did you do? We just, like, made out. That just made out. That's well, kind of what it means. kind of right? humping, right? It's like groping skipping. type of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, like, hand down my shirt, but yeah. Hand down the shirt. Yeah. And you seem pretty proud of the whole thing, too. No. I don't know. All right, so what did. happened now? You go to this party. Yeah. You get drunk. Uh-huh. Uh, where'd you get the booze, by the way? I was curious. We, we were in the garage, and, like, I bought there was a refrigerator in the garage. You had what? We were in the garage, and there was, like, the fridge in the garage, and it had all the stuff in it. Okay. Wow. So the parents are gone. Yeah. Oh. And you and you see this guy that's good-looking. Come on, Mental Drew. note. Drew, you didn't putting, do this? Yeah, well, yeah, but I'm putting, like, radar, my thing, radar implants on my kid. And, 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 and you meet this guy who's, and now you're having problems with the guy's sister. Yeah. Who's your friend? Yeah. And it's like a huge problem, or is it, can you get well, over it? Well, I mean, it? like, she's not talking to me, and she's, like, saying all this stuff behind my Everything's back. Everything's huge right. when you're See, here's what parents right. don't do. They, I think you got to prepare your kids today for stuff like this. Mm -hmm. The things are going to, you know, you got to tell your kid, there's going to come a time in your life when you're going to like somebody else's boyfriend or girlfriend, or you're going to like a girl, and the next day she's not going to like you. I mean, I was never prepared for this. I remember the first time a girl broke up with me, I was shattered. Mm -hmm. Or the first time I, you know, liked a girl that belonged to somebody else, I was sh I couldn't figure out why this couldn't work. Right. It seems to me, and I know what I'm dealing with here, but it seems to me that there's some way you got to prepare kids. This isn't that big. Uh, I'm not a, for the drinking no, at that's, 15. That's, that's, that's it's not that big a deal. It's just stuff. A lot worse is going to happen to you in life. No, and the friend should really get over it. Well, not know. a friend if she's mad about it. Yeah, should be young, laughing about young it. Young girls are oftentimes looking for an excuse to. Uh, uh, be girls bad. get weird about their brothers. Uh, right. Yeah. This well, is no big deal, and she should get over it, and she will get over it. Just in use a the week. I was drunk defense. That's all. Right. Right. Someone, uh, Jimmy uses when he drives. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. You know, I think my dad told me two things in my entire life that I can remember. One is, is uh, whatever happens to you, it's your fault. Right. So thanks, yeah. that was good advice. How about the part about getting a crappy dad? Uh, was that just something I did? Daddy drinks because you cry. That and uh, you're probably you're probably not going to get to six foot. That was the other uh, one that that remains with me. I'll never forget that when, when this woman broke up with her. I didn't said she didn't want to see me. What I was, was her name? Sick. Woman. Uh, Lorraine was her name. Yeah, was she was 19. Name? I was 16. Bitch. What was her last name? Bitch. I can't remember. God damn it! What is that? You're going out with that's the sound of it. You're going out with 19 year old girls when you're 16. Jesus. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I should add him. He was in a band. He was in a band. Yeah, a band. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right. I so, was in the uh, band, too, but, you know, I was playing clarinet. And we're get a, over. Wearing a big, tall hat. <laughs> a tuba. <laughs> big fur hat. <laughs> big hat. Big I don't know hat. hat. <laughs> White shoes Hey, you know on. who was in a band like that? My next door neighbor. Uh, was named George, and he played uh, the drum and bugle corps. You know, and yeah. yeah. And in my state, you could get kicked out of the state for being, a, uh, you know, juvenile delinquent. And they kicked him out. And the last thing he said to me was, "I'm going to California to start a band." And I said, "Yeah, sure, George." And it's Buddy Miles. Uh, oh, that was him. That was Buddy Miles. It, well, his name's not George. It was George Miles, but then his name changed it to Buddy. Buddy Miles. Next thing I know, he's a Buddy Miles. He's Jimi Hendrix drummer. Wow. Huh. There's a little story for you. Wish I would have got kicked out of somewhere. Yeah, out of a state. I, I don't know the exact way you got, got kicked, kicked out, out of the state. Well, they used to tell you that you got to get out of here. <laughs> I may have a little bit of that wrong. But they take him right down to the uh, rail line and they no, there was him a up judge. The post, post there was a bag judge and... who could actually tell you that uh, there's some bizarre <laughs> it's thing. Out of the state? Yeah. Really? That's the Wild West. Pat, yeah. uh, you got some kind of advanced dementia. Going <laughs> on. You think so? True. A diagnosed path. Well, buddy, the bottom line is, buddy turned out okay. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. All right. Who, who are we on the phone with? Uh, she's she's oh. fine. Oh, all right. She's that'll get over she's that. Cured. Do you guys remember? I was thinking when she was talking about drinking drinking at fifteen. And, and Drew, I know you're not going to admit to this, but I know you did it anyway. Where you'd have to go to the liquor store and get guys to buy beer for you. Yeah. You'd all stand out with three or four guys in the parking yeah. lot, and uh, one get guy high point? one guy would go to the guy and go like if this guy had long hair and he looked yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. And you'd go to him. Uh, uh, hey man, I uh, left my license out in my other van, and. Uh, 
here's 10 bucks. Do you think you get a six pack of Mickey's? And yeah. it'd take you all night, but one guy would go in there. And the problem was, is the guy who was willing to buy the beer for the underage guys was a little suspect. So yeah. he'd come back with five out of the six right. pack, uh, no change. You know, yeah. 10 bucks uh, for three bucks worth of Mickey's. The Big guy Mac. that will buy you beer is a guy that wants some of it and, right. and has less money than you. And will pocket whatever. Yeah, he, he, as a matter of fact, you'll see him down there every weekend. It's a money making. <laughs> he was always the him. first one to shave, too, that guy. <laughs> Jennifer. Yeah. You're 19. What's up? Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. Well, um, I just had a question. See, I met this guy while I was skating about a month and a half ago. And so, like, one of his friends came up and said he was really shy and invited us over and everything. And Good I had move. a couple beers. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Good move, by the way. Oh, he's real shy. Come on over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we all hung out. We ended up playing cards. I had a few beers and a couple shots of whiskey and everything. So this guy and I, we ended up making out for a couple hours, at least, while our friends are sitting over in another apartment really bored. And we were just making out in all that time. And we exchanged numbers after that. And we talked on the phones a couple of times. He invited me over again by myself this time. So I went over and same scenario. I had a couple of beers. But his friend said I was, like, too wasted to go home. So I ended up mm. staying the night over there. Yeah. And we ended up making out till odd hours in the morning. And then after that, he said he'd call me and never did. But we never ended up having sex or anything. So is that why he hasn't called me back? That's uh, interesting. So you spent, <laughs> you spent the night and you never got any further than just making out. Yeah. And how old is he? He's 25. 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're 19? Yeah. yeah. He, he ain't interested. Or he's what? interested in another gender. How many hours did you make out? Well, um, let me see. Or his prostate exploded. From or there. maybe his mouth is just too tired from all that making out to call you. I don't know. Mine was for a while. But, I mean, um... We did were going to meet... How did you end it? Again, huh? How did you end it? What, what was the last thing you guys said to each other? The last thing he said, I'll give you a call. Okay, that was the next morning, right? Uh, that was uh, before I left the... Yeah, the next evening. Uh, about. The next evening? Yeah. So you we stayed... out and watched TV with Stayed through the day. Huh? Wow. And, and did you sleep in the same bed? Yeah. We oh, did? And, well, and yeah, what, when we did sleep. What were you wearing? I was wearing a dress... You slept in your dress. Did you have the skates on? No. Ooh, that would have been great. You were just wearing pants. <laughs> let me just say this. If his buddy was saying he's shy, perhaps that's true, and maybe he is. And I mean, he can't be very aggressive if he made out for hours and never made any kind of move. Did he ever make any move on you? No, like, he didn't. Go for the underwear, the bra, or anything like that? Mm -mm. Maybe he's just a really, uh, you know, kind of a non-aggressive guy, and maybe him not calling you, is, is that's part of the whole deal. Did he grab a boob? Yeah. Your boob? Okay. okay. And I'd say oh, if I made out, I couldn't make out with my grandmother for three hours without uh, getting, <laughs> sliding a hand down the panty. So, I mean, eventually. <laughs> my grandpa's been gone for a couple of years now. Yeah, well, it's not like she's not single. She's still a woman. <laughs> maybe he's scared. You know, maybe it's not his scene. Yeah, maybe he is. Maybe, yeah, maybe one but of those the, guys. But the point yeah. is, is so he's what would you Jennifer. Think? What do you think I should do? That, that was you have his number? Call him. Call him. Was that a, that was yeah, a month ago? Oh, yeah. Call, okay. call him easily. Okay. Call him. Give him a call. It'll never work. We give him a call. Yeah. I mean, it may just, we should be It'll able to comfort you. Pre-prepared, she may be disappointed, but find out what's going on. He's Here. not terribly interested. Probably not. No. Probably not. Okay. He's 25, everybody. Jennifer? Yes. You're 23. What's Every, up? Everyone named Jennifer? <laughs> yeah, a lot of them tonight. Three or four. It's a popular name. I guess. <laughs> there's, a, there's a baby naming book out right. there called Beyond right. Jennifer and Jason. Right. Um, I rented a porn. Uh, I know. I'm sure you did. It was behind Jennifer and Jason. Hi, so, I, you know, I, I might have got some of that Buddy Miles story wrong. <laughs> 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 it wasn't Buddy Miles at all. It was Buddy Hackett. <laughs> I don't think he got kicked out. It may have been Miles Davis. Its, it's the legend of that story. That's what we grew up thinking. <laughs> Jennifer? Yes. Just keep worrying about it. Uh, What's your question? My question is for Drew. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a history of a very irregular menstrual cycle. I'll answer this. <laughs> Go ahead. Pat threw a guy out of his town for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that's how it is. Stay <laughs> lady. Uh, Go ahead. Well, think. I was just reading. I'd been on the pill. I've been off the pill for a while. I was on the pill for a long time. Um... And then I went off of it because I, I wasn't sexually active anymore, and so I stopped taking it. It's expensive, and so when I'm not on it, I don't have a period regularly. Mm -hmm. Like, I went off of it, I had a period the following month, and then I didn't have one for two months, and okay. then I had one again. Right. 
And so, and even before I ever went on the pill, when I first started uh, my period, I, I would never have regular periods. When I was in high school, I okay. could go three or four. Got it. What's the question? My question is, um, I was reading a book that has said something that about the kinds of food that I eat can make my ovaries overproduce estrogen, which can throw off my hormones and, mm, and I mean, problems. They can, Is that they can make some slight, potentially create some slight changes, but not yeah, chronic changes. Like a lot this. of uh, pregnant mare liver, I think yeah. uh, that's one of the things, right, Drew? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> potentially. Um, so really, is it, you, you, you're much more likely to have something called polycystic ovarian disease or some other cause, some what's called hypothalamic pituitary axis dysfunction. I mean, there are genetic reasons people have abnormal periods. So what should she do? Nothing. Nothing? Ever? What about... It, nothing. So go it, back on the pill. Why go on the pill if you need to have it regularized, if you're having some problem as, as symptoms as a result, but there's nothing, has no health implications. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it doesn't hurt to not be regular, because when Abs I went to the doctor, she said, well, you know, we should probably put you on the pill so that you can stay regular. But if I don't have a need for birth control... It doesn't hurt. If, were you having other symptoms? Were the periods very, very heavy and painful when you had no. them? No. No, not at all. I no don't know why. You know, no heavy cramps or... No, I don't know why they would... Do you, do you have any other things? Are you are you overweight? Do you have extra body hair? Or anything no. of those? Do you have high blood pressure? Not you're not overweight. No. All right. Well, there's no excuse and, for not and, having and did sex. They, did they evaluate you to see? If, <laughs> thanks for letting me. Uh, did they evaluate you to through. see if you had polycystic yeah. ovarian disease? No. <laughs> no, they didn't. Yeah, right. I mean, there's, there's some things to look at here. All right. Here. Why aren't you uh, having sex, Jennifer? You're well, 23. I'm, sex. I'm just not having sex with men. Oh, oh. you're with the, with the gals. Right. Really? Ooh. And you have a girlfriend? Yes. And uh, how long you been lesbian? Um, well, I've been with this girlfriend for two years. What kind of shoes do you wear? What kind of shoes do I wear? Why are we on yeah. the... We, you're not, you're shoes, I'm guessing, that are higher in the front than they are in the back. But, but That's how minute. you really judge a lesbian wait a minute, you were, footwear. Yeah. You were not on birth control, uh, the pill for birth control ever then, right? No, no, I was. I was on birth control initially because of that, yes. Because of... Because I was with a man. Okay. Why did you uh, turn off on men? What happened? <laughs> I just met a woman who I fell in love with. She's incredible, I bet. And and let me ask you, Jennifer, <laughs> is one of uh, does one of you sort of play the uh, male role in the relationship? I don't think that. Mm, it, no. Um. You know what I'm I, I definitely think that she's more masculine than I am. They always say no to this. You watch Ally <laughs> McBeal? Pardon? You no, I don't watch Ally McBeal. All right, uh, Jennifer. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> That's fine. I right, you, you guys, you you never use a strap on though, do you? Um, very occasionally. Oh, really? Yeah. That whole uh, irregular but period the thing. The thing is, though, it's is a big that... deal for lesbians. Hmm. Pardon? The uh, whole irregular period thing is a big deal yeah. for lesbians because you never know what might happen when you're. That's all you got. What were you going to say? What were you going to say, Jennifer? I'm sorry? You were starting to say something? Um, oh, I was just uh, talking to Adam about the, the strap on. It, it, she seems to be the more masculine <laughs> of the No, no, you said, very, you said interestingly, and then you stopped. Interestingly, because he had asked about if one of us was on that. Okay. Strap on. Right. I, see. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Are you glad you stopped the comedy for that, Drew? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, uh, I, I, I have this theory that in relationships, uh, gay relationships or, or lesbian relationships, that one, one of the partners sort of takes a more dominant, maybe even uh, masculine role. Right. And uh, wears the pants, so to speak. Who who does that in our, in our gay relationship, Adam? Well, that's why we clash so much. <laughs> we both want to play trade Papa. Yeah, We're each in one leg of the pants. Yeah. Yeah, that's you, right. You trade off. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. Stein. Yeah. You do. Well, you're the woman, you know, and Stein's the woman, too. Adam comes in and, and chiffon Pat, once in a while. Pat's starting to become the woman. Okay. <laughs> we, uh... We're going to take a little break. We'll argue over uh, who's the bitch. Uh, and we'll be back after this. I feel so liquidy. Really? Yeah. I like. You're listening to Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, I'll be right back. Yeah, Loveline with Adam We are back with uh, the love line. I'm Adam. That is Drew. Forget about the phone number. Forget about the fax number. Pat O'Brien is our guest tonight from uh, Access Hollywood, 7:30 NBC. Well, Every night of the apologize week. Apologize to Buddy Miles. I think I got this story wrong. <laughs> and uh, Jimmy Kimmel, of course, from the uh, Man Show and Win Ben Stein. I also want to apologize to Buddy Miles. I'd like to. Uh, send it's one of those urban legends. Isn't this where you do the um, uh, the uh, DJ talking thing? 
Oh, oh, the uh, no, lightning no, round. What's that? No, <laughs> what is Because I've been wanting to do that with you. you know? oh, yeah. <laughs> the two of you. Can I leave and right. go to the bathroom or something? <laughs> no, come on, Drew. Don't. It's, it's no fun if there's nobody to hate it. All right. The panel will hate it, I promise. <laughs> you want me to start it? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's 12 minutes before the hour. That's 48 minutes past the hour. Hope you're having a good night. You're along with Ace Rockola. How you doing today, Ace? <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. That is the fabulous Jimmy Kimmel. He is hot, hot, hot. Oh, along with here. Pat, Pat the man, Pat O'Brien. Mr. Access Hollywood, he... Mr. Hollywood Insider, Mr. Hollywood. What's going on in Hollywood he... today, Pat? Hi, everybody. Tonight on Access Hollywood, <laughs> Allie McBeal night. Hollywood's all talking about the same sex kiss. Oh, that Allie McBeal that lesbian kiss was that, was that? <laughs> guys let me jump in with the time it's 11 49 and three seconds that's uh, 10 the minutes and uh 57 uh, seconds away from the top of the hour 12 o'clock straight up you're listening to love line i'm ace rock Ole, your humble host pat o'brien and jimmy kimmel are both on the show and they are hot 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 let's uh, go to the phones and find out what america's talking about <laughs> hi may yeah hey you got through yeah, <laughs> what's your favorite radio station <laughs> <laughs> You're a winner. You're 26. Yeah. After four years of marriage, sex only lasts 10 minutes. Yep. 10 minutes? Well, that's an eternity in my house. I hear you talking. 10 minutes? I could get three of them done in that kind of time. <laughs> I may? Yeah. Let me give the time out. It's 11.49 and 48 seconds. That is 10 minutes and 2 seconds away from the top of the hour. You're listening to Love Line. I'm Ace Rock Cola. Our guest tonight, Jimmy Kimmel and the great Pat O'Brien, and they are hot, hot, hot. All right, Jaime. Thank you very much. We're going back <laughs> to the phones. we got to burn through some calls here. Jeff, yeah. you're 17. Yeah, What's going, up, man? brother? You want a lot of sex and your girlfriend doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, she can't get enough, huh? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You can't get enough. She, she doesn't want you anywhere plenty. near you. Dr. J Dr. Jeff, anything we can do about this? <laughs> no, just just hold on and don't vomit. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff? Yeah. You got a slipper, the ether rag, and the duct tape, brother. <laughs> that is my answer for you. Let me give the time out. It is 10, 50, and 35 seconds. That's nine minutes and, fifth, no, 65 seconds away from the top of the hour. Let me reset the show. Our guest tonight, if you haven't heard of the great Pat O'Brien and Jimmy Kimmel, and they are hot, hot, hot. Hey. You're listening to Loveline. I'm Ace Rock Collins. Back to the phones we go. JC. Yes. You're 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Jimbo, you want to read his question? Uh, what is it? I can't read his question there. You give wife oral sex, but she won't give it to you. How do you get her to do it? Oh, that's a good question. I wish I knew the answer myself. <laughs> I wouldn't be here right now, buddy. High five on that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> JC? Yeah. You want her to give a little oral sex on you? Yeah. You know, I've been married for five years already. And, uh, What's I, the know, problem? of the time we have sex. I always... Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You may think I'm kidding. Broads love the taste of marzipan. You wrap your penis in that marzipan, she'll be all over it. Do you understand, JC? Thanks for calling in. Let me reset. She may not be up for that. She, some women just can't quite do that. It's 11.51 and 40 seconds. This is the best mix of today's hits from the 80s and beyond. That's 8 minutes and 20 seconds away from the top of the hour. 12. The witching hour. Straight up. You're listening to Love. Love line. I'm Ace Rockola. Our guest tonight, Pat O'Brien and gone? Jimmy Kimmel. Pat's and gone. they are hot, hot, hot. And it's back to the phones we go. <laughs> Jeff, wait a minute. I already spoke to Jeff. Let's talk to John. Johnny, hey, what's, up? what's happening, Lady Kelly? You're 20 years old. Uh, actually, I actually had a kind of more of a serious question, not really suited for the lightning round. But, oh, uh, I see. All right. Well, let's move on and speak <laughs> to Heather. But before we move on, let me just give the time. It's 11.52 and 25 seconds. That is seven minutes and 35 seconds away from the top of the hour. Straight up, I'm Ace Rockola. Our guests tonight, Pat O'Brien and Jimmy Kimmel, they are hot, hot, hot. Heather? Okay, well, I was told that I could possibly uh, have HPV, uh, uh -huh. but they can't tell me for sure. Uh -huh. They just have cells mm -hmm. that show the signs uh -huh. that I could possibly have it. Uh -huh. so I have to go back in the, in four months and, mm -hmm. like, retest, but, like, uh -huh. I've, been, I've only been using foam with my uh -huh. Should I start using condoms again? Mm -hmm. yes. Ooh, yes. HPV? What is HPV? Warts. That stands for... <laughs> <laughs> Human papillomavirus. That's right. She needs to wear the condom in the meantime. I'll Definitely tell you, careful. if you can uh, position those warts in the right right place, it uh, really helps the ladies out. 
<laughs> it's 11.53 in five seconds. That's six minutes and 55 seconds away from the top of the hour. I'm Ace Rock Cole. This is Love Line. It's back to the phones we go. Did I mention that Pat O'Brien and Jimmy Kimmel are guests tonight? And both of them combined are hot, 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 hot. Yes, they are hot. And we're going back to the phones again. Sandra. Hello. 19 years old. What's your problem, sister? Um, I have a question, actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. I have two children, uh -huh. um, and I'm 19, mm -hmm. and I'm not with their father. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering, mm -hmm. um, are, with guys, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. are guys that scared that if you have children, I mean, how do you date and have two children? Mm, let me think about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you got to find yourself a pedophile, honey. Oh, That'll please. draw them in. Good advice, Jimmy. Oh. High five on that. Oh, my God. <laughs> High five on the pedophilia <laughs> joke. Oh, my God. Sandy? Right. Sandy, can I call you Sandy? Hello, yeah. Sandy, you call me Ace Rock Cole. <laughs> Listen, first off, hold on. One second, let me give the time out. It's 11.54 in five seconds. That is five minutes and 55 seconds away from the top of the hour, the witching hour, 12 o'clock, okay. straight that up. You're nice. listening to Loveline. I'm Ace Rock Cole. Sandra? <laughs> Yeah. First thing you can do is keep your legs closed for five minutes, sweet pea, and stop popping the kids out. Secondly, most guys will steer away from that, but a small percentage of them, as my partner Jimmy Kimmel mentioned, the pedophiles, and <laughs> an, a subset of the pedophiles, guys who don't know they're pedophiles, will be attracted to you and the kids. So don't worry, you will find a guy, okay, Sandra? Right. But no more kids for a little while, and focus on the kids and focus on being mommy, all right? All right. All right. <laughs> all right, that all right. is just good advice. Let me give the time out when <laughs> <laughs> we got it. even I'm growing tired. Jimmy, it is yeah, 11, I hope you appreciate what you've done here, Jimmy. I really am proud of you. 54 in 50 seconds. That <laughs> is five minutes and 10 seconds away from the top of the hour. Pat O'Brien and Jimmy Kimmel, our guests tonight. They are hot, hot, hot. You're listening to Love Line. I'm Ace Rockola. That's my partner, Dr. Drew the Love Doctor. Drew's We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more of the show after this. <laughs> Okay. The phone number for Love Line is 1 800 Love 191. Love Line, I'll be right back. Love Line on 92.1 KFMA. Uh, Pat, if you want to uh, track Jimmy, by the way, a good place to start is the Price Club in the food section. <laughs> he likes right. to buy ravioli in bulk. <laughs> All right, that is uh, it with the show. I want to thank uh, Pat O'Brien for coming in here tonight. Access uh, Hollywood and the uh, sports, uh, where the hell is it? Sportspage.com. Uh, November 15th, that will uh, be out, so you will want to check that out. Pat, thank you very much for coming in. Always, awesome. uh, always a good time. Come in anytime you like. Thank and, of you. course, uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Look for him on Stay uh, away, Jimmy. Win Ben Stein's <laughs> Money. Right. And, of course, the Man Show premiering tomorrow night at 10.30 Comedy Central. So, yeah. Spike Jones tomorrow night, and until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I can deal with the fact that I am gay now. Mommy! This has been Loveline. The views expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. And you're probably not the views of Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins Zingle. Now, please listen to this station longer.